Good morning, Limitless Church. Let's just stand to our feet this morning and worship the Lord. We're so excited for you to join us today. So come on, let's worship.
won't forget the moment I heard you call my name Out of the grip of darkness Into the light of grace Just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life And where there is dead religion Now there is living things All of my hope and freedom Are found in Jesus' name just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. No longer I who lives, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. Now I am free, the hope of Says I am guilty. I point to the price you paid. When something says I'm not worthy. I point to that empty grave. Just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. No longer I who lives, but Christ in me. For I've been born. you've done for me Jesus to fully praise you it would take all eternity just like Nazareth oh you brought me back to life
about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness would not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Amen? So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Jesus told Martha, which was Lazarus' sister, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Amen? Everyone who believes in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloth, his, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Amen. Amen. Jesus will show us his glory. And I believe Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen. And I believe there's something inside of you today that Jesus wants to resurrect. Whether it's, it's healing in your life. Amen. Whether it's getting you up to walk. Amen. A dream that he has given you years ago. He wants to resurrect. Amen. And he wants to show you his glory. Amen. Let's worship him. Amen. Let's worship. Just give him 30 seconds more. 30 seconds more. Show us your glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Show me your glory.
just want you to remember this week. Just remember, keep that in your heart. He is the resurrection and the life. Amen. And we just thank you for being here this morning. It's been so amazing to worship God together, all right, with our brothers and sisters. So just turn around, say hi to someone, shake their hand, and give them a high five. We're glad you're here. Welcome to Limitless Church. The vision of our church is to lead people to encounter Jesus and live out God's limitless purpose through daily partnership with the Holy Spirit. If this is your first time with us, we can't wait to meet you. Text the word Limitless VIP to 94000 so that we can get to know you. You can even fill out a connect card from the seat in front of you and return it to our VIP table on your way out for a free gift. Limitless Connect is your first step to joining and serving at Limitless Church, but it's about more than membership. It's about knowing God more, discipleship and community. For more info, text Limitless Connect to 94000. If you would like to take the next step in your faith journey, and be baptized, you can sign up by texting the word baptism to 210-880-0950. Here at Limitless Church, we honor God by giving our first and our best through tithes and offering. There are several ways you can give. Text GIVE7 to 94000 and click the link online at LimitlessChurchSA.com. You can give in person by using the boxes on your way out or send by mail. You can follow us on social media at Limitless Church SATX. You may also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Limitless Church SA to catch up on our latest series and sermons. If you have little ones ages 5 to 12, we would love for them to join our Limitless Kids upstairs. We also provide a nursery for world changers for and under. We would also like to remind you to silence all cell phones. The message will begin shortly. Limitless, what's up? Is everyone doing all right this morning? Really quick, can we give it up for Jesus? Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but I love being in the presence of God with you guys on on Sunday morning. And um, if you're here and this is your first time, I just want to welcome you. Um, Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us and um, we just want to thank you. The, the vision of this house um, is limitless, exists to lead people to encounter Jesus and live out God's limitless purpose through daily partnership with the Holy Spirit. So our hope and our prayer is that you come, you would leave better than you came. Amen. That you would leave some with some purpose inside of your heart. And uh, my name is Josh. I am one of the teaching pastors here at Limitless. And uh, if you've been here before, you know how I do. You know I'm wild, and y'all know that I preach better when y'all preach at me. Can I get an amen? amen. It's quiet in here. I, I need y'all a little bit more hyped up this morning. And we've, uh, we've been in a series called Build My Life. Raise your hands if you've been enjoying this series. Um, and uh, it, it has just been phenomenal. We've been talking about really making Jesus the foundation of our lives and putting him first. And when you put him first, everything else falls in order and everything else turns out amazing. Amen. Um, but what I want to do this morning, um, is it okay if I encourage someone this morning? Is that okay? Can, can, I, can I bring some hope to someone's heart this morning through the word of God? Um, this, this past week, I was asked a question that really sparked the message that I'm going to speak today. Um, and God has just been speaking to me all week long 
Um, and, and I want to I want to talk to those that are in a season today um, where they're waiting for God to move. Anybody ever feel like you're waiting on God to move? Um, or, or maybe you might be in this season where you've been praying and you've been asking God for, for breakthrough and deliverance and freedom in your life, but it just seems like he doesn't answer you. Anybody ever feel like this before? In fact, if you're taking notes, I want you to title this message, Why is God Taking So Long? Anybody ever asked that question before? Like, God, why are you taking so long to come through for me? Like it almost feels like every time you're, you're praying or doing something, it feels like he's taking his time. And I want to talk about that today. Um, but I want to go before the Lord in prayer. I want us to bow our heads, close our eyes. And I want you right there where you're at, I want you to welcome the Holy Spirit. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, I just invite you today. Speak to me today through your word. Lord, I pray for every person here today, God. Lord, they are not here by coincidence, but you have a divine appointment with them today, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you have them here for a purpose, Lord God, and you're here to speak to their lives. Lord Jesus, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. I cannot speak without you. God, we cannot do anything without you. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you. I pray that you would use me Use my words, use my lips to preach your word to the best of my ability, but even more supernaturally, Lord God. So we just love you. We welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says amen, amen and amen. Is there anybody in here that hates like waiting? You're just impatient. Anybody, raise your hand. If you're an impatient person, you hate waiting. I'm raising my, I'm, I'm the most impatient person I know. Like all things waiting, I hate. I hate waiting in traffic. Anybody hate waiting in traffic? I hate traffic. I, I feel like if you don't make it to heaven, you, you better be careful because I believe there's traffic in hell. I really do. Like I believe people are going to be back to back, bumper, bumper for all of eternity. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I, I hate traffic. And what I hate the most about traffic is like when you look ahead and there's just like a clear roadway. But it's the people that are causing the traffic, right? Or, or if you're at like a, a stoplight and the person doesn't go within 0.5 seconds because they're looking at their phone and you honk, that, that's me. I, I, I hate waiting at the doctor's office. I, I hate when doctors schedule appointments because you get there at 2.30 for your appointment and what do they say? Please be seated. We'll call you when we're ready. Why have me come at 2.30 if you're not going to call me at 2.30, right? Anybody in here agree? Like, why set up an appointment for me if you're not going to call me right away? And uh, almost a year ago, my son Cash, um, he's the wild one in the family. He got very sick, and he had about a 104, almost a 105 fever. And my wife, she calls the on-call nurse, and they're like, rush him to the hospital. My, my wife, she's like this with the on-call nurses. Like, they call her like, what's up, girl? And like, they already know her. Like, she calls so much. And uh, so they're like, rush him to the hospital. I get cash. I put him in my car. I take him to the hospital. As I walk in, the waiting room is full with other sick people. But because he's my son, my son is more sick than y'all's kids, so my son should go first, right? And so I get to the counter. I'm like, look, my son, he has a 104 fever, going almost 105. The on-call nurse, they told us to come in here. And the lady says, okay, fill out some paperwork, and then you can be seated. I'm like, no, you didn't hear me. My, my son is sick. I need you to see me, like, right now. Like, the on-call nurse said, like, we need a rush here. And she laughed at me. Ooh, I wanted to throw, like, a, a jump kick through the little window. <laughs> really, I did. And, and, and I was like, ma'am, you don't understand. Look at my son. And she's like, sir, look at every other person. They've been waiting before you. Can you please be seated? And I was like, okay. Okay, cool. And I, and I go and I sit with my son, Cash, and I start to think, like, this is a hospital. Why can't they see me right away? And God began to show me that there's people in their life right now that they've been waiting on God in this season to move. And you're saying, God, if you're all powerful, almighty, you can do all things, then why don't you come through for me right now when I ask you to? Can we be real today? 
Anybody in here ever feel this before? You can be praying for your spouse and your marriage and, and y'all continue to fight over and over and over and over again. And, and you're praying for your spouse and you're like, God, help me out here. Will you change them? And then every time you pray, it almost feels like it's getting worse. I, I remember at a point in, in, in our marriage, I, I was scared to pray because I felt like every time I prayed, something would happen. I'm just being, I'm being honest, I'm real. I'm just kind of saying what you are thinking. Right? Like that's my job to, to be up here. And, and, and there was times I was almost scared because I felt I would pray, something would happen. Or you could be here today and maybe you're praying, God, save my son, save my daughter. They're, they're rebellious right now. Would you just help them? And you pray and pray and then the next day they go and do something stupid. Can anyone agree? God, I need you to come through for me. I don't know how me and my family are going to eat tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to pay my car. And you're praying and you're waiting for God just to deposit a check into your account. And then you wake up the next day and you're actually negative. Come on, someone. And many times we're saying, God, why aren't you coming through for me? In fact, my family and I, we've been going through a season like this for months now. Um, I don't know if you guys know, many of you do, my grandfather... Um, he is the founder of this church, amazing man of God. I love him so much. Um, but over these past months, it, it hasn't been the best on his life. It, it, it's been very scary, and we've cried out, God, heal him. God, strengthen him. And, 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 and it feels like we pray, and we, we surround each other, and we speak the word of God. And sometimes it feels like it's not getting better. It's, it's sometimes getting worse. And, and, and this past week, my mom, she called me and she said, Josh, you need to go see Grandpa. Things aren't looking the best right now. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, just, just go see him. And so I picked up my son Zion from school. And we drove to my grandparents' house. And as I was on the way to my grandparents' house, my son Zion said, Dad, when is God going to heal Grandpa? And I say, that's what we're believing for. We, we've been praying for him and, and we're speaking the word. That's why we got to have faith. We got to continue to, to speak and, and, and pray for him. And we can't stop. The Bible says never stop praying. So we got to keep praying. And, and he says, can I ask you another question? I say, yes, son. And he says, does God love grandpa? And I said, of course he loves grandpa. Like God loves everyone. You know that. If God loves grandpa, then why doesn't he heal him? And this question broke my heart. As a pastor, it almost feels like you, you, you need to know all the answers all the time for people. That when people are going through trauma, you want to send them scriptures and be there for them. But it's different when you're going through it. And you're having to trust in God all at the same time. And, and, and I began to share with him and try to explain the, the, the answer to his question to the best of my ability. I said, son, well, God loves us so much, but sometimes the enemy will come in when we're struggling with pain. And he'll lie to us and he'll point our finger at, at God and say, it's God's fault. And if he loved you, he would just do this thing for you. And, and God began to show me that many people in the church today have this same exact question. God, if you loved me, why are you taking so long for my breakthrough? And I told my son, I said, God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's always going to be here. The Bible says he'll never leave us, never forsake us. And you know what the Holy Spirit asked me? He said, do you believe that about me? Or are you just saying it? Do you believe in this moment with, with your grandfather and what your family's been going through? Do you believe that I'm a good God? And so all week, guess what I did? I was searching for the answer and I, I want to just give you some insight. I, I was looking all throughout the Bible um, for different scriptures and passages, how I can answer this question to the best of, of my ability. And I've been praying, and I've been praying for those today that you're in a season where you've been asking that question. And so what, today what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of Bible study. Can we do that today? Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Well, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to John 11, verse 1. It's crazy. Vanessa just talked about this, so this confirms what God is going to speak today. John 11, verse 1 says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. How many of you know that there's going to be one time in life where every single one of us has a Lazarus in our life? 
A Lazarus is something that you've been waiting on for God to move in your life that you might look at someone else and God already done in their life. You ever see that? You're like, God, I've seen you heal that person. Why won't you heal me? God, I've seen you have breakthrough in their marriage. Why won't you have breakthrough in my marriage? That's what a Lazarus is. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother, I want you to listen to this because we're going to talk about later. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. I I like the way they worded that. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, as I was reading this passage, everything in this passage makes sense up until this point. Can we agree? Right? As believers in Christ, when we are going through something, what should we do? We should go to Jesus, right? This is exactly what they're doing they're, they're, they're struggling, their they're brother's sick. And so the thing about Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, they, they spent a lot of time with Jesus. In fact, Jesus would actually go through their village. And um, Martha was a great cook. So she would cook like ribeye steaks for Jesus and stuff like that. And, and she just loved, Jesus just loved Martha's food. And Mary, she would be discipled by Jesus. So when Jesus would go in their house, Martha was cooking, Mary was, was listening. And I want to I tell you, you, you singles out there, if you're looking for someone, look for someone that can cook and they can listen. If you find that, then marry them, okay? So, so they, can, they can cook and they, they listened to Jesus. They invited Jesus into their home. They welcomed him. They took care of Jesus, right? So now there's something going on in their life, and they need Jesus to take care of them. So it, it's valid for Martha to go. I'm pretty sure she got a messenger, and she says, look, bro, I want you to write this down. I want you to write. I want you to say, Jesus, Lazarus is no, 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 you know what? Don't say that. Say, say the one that you love. That sounds a lot better, right? I, I love the way she wears. She's like, Jesus, the one that you love. Remember the guy? Because listen, Jesus is very busy where he's at. He's super busy. So you really want to remind him that he loves Lazarus. So put that in the message. You ever remind God, like, God, don't you love me? Right? I, I, I can't count how many times I've been praying for my grandfather. I'm like, God. He gave up his old life like I'm here. My kids are here because of the decision that he made for our family. You love him. So can you heal him? God, God, you, I'm supposed to be your son. Lazarus actually means the one whom God helps. Isn't that crazy? So so it it should be no brainer that Jesus is going to come and say, yes, I'll heal Lazarus. Everything makes sense up until this point until this part. I want to read this to you. It says, so the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness would not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. That all makes sense. But then listen to this. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Does that make sense to y'all? That, that really doesn't make sense to me. Like, you love them so much so you didn't come through for them, Jesus? C- come on, can we be real? This is what the word of God says, right? It doesn't say Jesus got up, he left what he was doing, and he went and got by Lazarus' sickbed. He prayed over him, and he healed him. It said, Jesus loved him so much, so he stayed where he was at. And and as I'm I'm reading this scripture, I'm like, God, I don't understand this. Like, if if you loved him, then why didn't you go to him? Because we're asking this question together all the time. God, if you love me, then why won't you come through for me? And I want to give you some truths today about what's going on when we are waiting. The first truth is while we are waiting, God is working. I want you to know that today. So 
if you look at this passage, it almost feels like Jesus is not working for Lazarus, right? You're like, God, are, are you really working for him? Because it, it, it doesn't feel like you are because you stayed where you're at. But I want you to know today that while you are waiting, God is working. Romans 8.28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. But sometimes God's work looks a lot different than the way we would work the situation, right? As I begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, why didn't you allow Jesus just to go over there? I really felt it was because there was something in Martha and Mary's heart. See, they related Jesus, his love, to Jesus coming through for them. And many times this is how we relate God's love to us. Every single one of us in here has a love language. Anybody in here ever read the, the book, The Five Love Languages by Dr. Gary Chapman? Such a, an amazing book. It talks about how every human being has a love language. There, there's affirmation. There's quality time. There's acts of service. There's physical touch. Um, what's the last one? I don't remember the last one. Acts of service. My, my love language is affirmation. So when my wife comes and tells me, boy, you look good, it just, it just excites me. I love it. Like, boy, you've been working out? And I'm like, you could, you could tell? Like, and so I, I, I love affirmation. I love when I get off here and she's like, that was the best message I've ever heard you preach. And I know she's lying, but she tells me it anyways. And uh, I also love physical touch. I love when she touches me. Um, not like that. When she grabs my hand and when she hugs me. And I, I love physical. I love when we're at the mall and she would just, she would just grab my hand and we'll walk. I, I like physical touch. Her, she has all five love languages. And so the way sometimes we prove our love to each other is by meeting our love languages, right? Like if you tell someone you love them, sometimes it's not enough just to say it. You want to show them that you love them. And so Jesus is working differently than our own understanding. He's saying, I love you, so because I love you, I'm staying where I'm at. But I, I believe that there was this unhealthy perception that Martha and Mary had of Jesus. He only loves me when he does something for me. And so that might be you today. You might be saying, God, do you love me? And he does love you. But I want you to write this down. God is more concerned about working on the inside of you before he works out what's in front of you. I, I, I want, I want y'all to write that down because the Holy Spirit showed me this this past week and it just blew my mind away. He, he's more worried about working on here. See, we, we, we see what's in front of us and we think, God, I need you to take care of this thing. And he wants to. He wants to work. But what he's more concerned about is what's on the inside of here. See, see, for many of you, you're praying, Lord, change my spouse. Change the way they are. Save them. Heal them. Do something in them. And God is saying, I, I want to, but what I want to do, I want to change what's inside of you first. Because if I don't change what's inside of you, then when you get the spouse that you want, you're actually going to destroy them instead of helping them. Come on. God, give me more money, please. I need more finance. I need more provision. You're my provider, God. I need this. I need this. I need this. And God said, I want to do that, but first I want you to take care of the little that I gave you. Because you can't even take care of the little. How am I supposed to give you more? God, would you help my son and daughter to stop being rebellious and they cuss, Lord, and they have such a bad mouth, and I want you to change that. And God says, how about you change your mouth first? How about you change the way you talk to your spouse in front of them first and be a good example first? Come on, I'm coming for some of y'all today. I'm stepping on some toes. It's quiet in here. God works differently sometimes than the way we think he should work. He wants to do what's in front of you, but he wants to work on the inside first. Amen. The second truth, just because God seems silent doesn't mean he's absent. So many times we're praying. I was telling my grandma this week, I just wish God would give us a word in this situation. And you, you, sometimes we question, God, are you here? Because we're, we're, we're not hearing 
his voice. But why won't we hear God's voice? Why does he go silent on us? Well, the first thing, I know you've all heard this before. A teacher never talks during a test. And so you might be going through a test right now, and you're waiting on Jesus is the teacher. And sometimes as we go through the test, we kind of realize that our faith wasn't as strong as we thought it was, right? We're lifting our hands and we're praising God. God, we worship you. Uh, Show me your glory, God. And something happens, we're like, are you even real? Like, are you even here for me, God? Right? During those tests, what those tests will do is they'll just pull out what's on the inside of you. And sometimes we hate the test, but the test is what's going to make you grow. The second reason he'll be silent, he's not being silent, you're just not listening. So for many of us, we are praying, God, do this, God, do this. But how many times have you sat there and said, God, what do you want to speak to me? You ever talk to someone that doesn't shut up? Like you're just talking and talking and they always have a comeback for everything. Anybody in here? Raise your hands. You know, Do not hit your neighbor, though. Do not hit your spouse. Like you're talking to them and you're trying to point out, like, why they're doing what they're doing, and they just will not listen. My, my son Zion, he could be like this sometimes. Like, he will talk and talk, and so I'm like, you know what? I'm done, boy. And uh, we went to the mall this, this past week, and I bought my wife some sunglasses. And he was like, Dad, I want some sunglasses too. And I said, um, okay, yeah, we'll buy you some. We just can't buy you these because they're not prescribed. You wear prescription glasses, so you can't wear these. And he was like, no, but I want them. And I said, son, you won't be able to see in them. And he says, Yes, I will. And I'm like, no, you won't. I was like, you, like when you take off your glasses, you even tell me it's, it's blurry. He said, I'll be able to see in them, please. I said, I'm not going to spend $80 on something you're not even going to wear. He says, I will wear them. And, he j- and so finally I got fed up. I'm like, I'm not talking to this dude anymore. And I just walked away. And, and sometimes this is God is, is speaking to you over and over, but you just don't listen. You're not opening your ear to him. You're too busy talking about your problems instead of glorifying how big he is in your life, that he's bigger than those problems you face. Amen? (laughs) Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I believe that sometimes we just have a problem with being still. We don't know how to just sit in the presence of God and let him speak to our life. We're too busy speaking to him And the third reason he might seem silent is you haven't listened to the last word he gave you. So what about that word a year ago when he said, I want you to forgive this person. You said, God, no way. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they hurt me. He's saying, hey, you know what? I want you to forgive that person that hurt you when you were younger, that took advantage of you when you were younger. And you say, I can't, God. There's no way. There's no way. And then you go throughout your life and you're like, God, speak to me. And he says, I want to, but you got to be obedient to the last word I gave you. Do y'all, do y'all remember Jonah in the Bible? Jonah and the big fish. I was reading this story to my kids the other day and I was acting it out, acting like a big fish on the floor and grabbing them and stuff. And, and God gave Jonah a word. He said, I want you to go and speak to the people of Nineveh and I want you to tell them to repent. And what did Jonah do? He ran away. He said, I don't want to listen to that word. I don't want to do that word. He ran. He gets on a boat. Then God causes a storm in his life to wake him up. See, you don't understand that some of the storms that you're facing are because of the disobedience in your life. Because you haven't listened to the word of God. That God is trying to wake you up because he knows what's best for you. And so Jonah gets on this boat. A storm happens. He's thrown overboard. All of a sudden, a fish comes and eats him. And then he's in the belly of the fish for three days. But it wasn't until Jonah said, all right, God, I've had enough. I'll listen. Then he spit out. See, there's many of you that God is calling you today to do something. He has been calling you. For some of you, he's saying, I want you to give give me your life. I want you to come and serve me. I know what's best for you. And you're like, no, God, I know what's best for me. I know what I want to do. And so right now it feels like you're in darkness, in the belly of a fish. But it's until you say, all right, God, you know what? I surrender. Your will be done. How many of you know that God's will is so much better than ours? Like if we did it our way, we would destroy our life. God's will is so much better than our lives. Amen? Now what I want to do, I want to continue in this story. 
Um, it, it's, it is a very emotional story about Lazarus. So I, I want to continue reading, and we're going to point some things, and I'm going to show you the third truth in a little bit. But we could turn back to John 11, verse 17. So, um, spoiler alert, Lazarus dies. Jesus doesn't get there on time. Um, and here we are on the scene. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Man, that's crazy. Like, he, like they had his funeral. They said all the good stuff about Lazarus. They put him in the tomb. Four days later, Jesus shows up. And, and so this really kind of just destroys every false expectation that we have of God, right? I, I love this too because Jewish people believe that if you die, there could be three days that you have the chance to be risen again. Isn't it crazy that Jesus came on the fourth day to really show them this situation is dead, but I can still raise it to life. So I don't care what you're going through in your life that you might feel is dead. It's not over until Jesus says it's over. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. He comes four days later. It says, now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, I, I, love, I love what she does. She went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know now even that God will give you whatever you ask. And so how many of y'all know that we all have different response responses to disappointment in our life some of us respond differently and we see these two people they respond different Mary the one that used to sit at the feet of Jesus and would listen to him speak she didn't even come out of the house this time she closed her heart up to Jesus and I, I just wonder how many people in here have been disappointed you have been heartbroken you have asked of God to do for you, and he didn't come through for you at the time. And so now when we are worshiping, you're saying, I I'm not coming out of my house. Because I don't want to deal with the disappointment that he can possibly disappoint me in the future. I I've closed my heart off to Jesus because he didn't come through for me in the past. And if he really loved me, then, then he would have been there for my family member that passed away. He would have healed them from sickness. He would have allowed me and my spouse to have a child. We've been asking for a child, but he never came through. Come on. See, and, and, and Mary stayed in her home. And I, I just wonder how many people need to be healed from this today, that you've been closed up to Jesus. But then we have Martha. Martha was different. Homegirl met Jesus like before he got into the town. Like she didn't even wait she, she was like, you ever know anybody that just tells you how it is? Like, they just say it. They see it, and they will say it. My mom and my grandma. Like, they tell me, my grandma, if I don't call her, she's like, you don't have a grandma or what? Like, when I see her, my mom, if I don't call her within one day, she's like, you forgot about me or what? The other day, I, 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 I joke with my mom, and she got off the phone, and she called me back, and she's like, that's not how I am. And I was like, I'm just kidding, mom. And she just tells me how it is. Y'all ever met anybody like that before? This was Martha. She, she was like, here's that Jesus comes. And she's like, I'm going to tell him. You watch. She walks to the gate. What's up? I thought you loved us. Why didn't you, why didn't you get here on time? He's dead now because of you. I wonder how many people are blaming Jesus for the situation. Jesus, what's up? But, but the thing I love about Martha was that she was honest. And I believe the most godliest prayers are the most honest prayers. The best thing you can do when you are praying is be honest with God. How many of y'all know that God is not scared of your honesty? And he will not get offended by your honesty. See, people, we get offended, and sometimes that's why we don't tell people the truth. But God wants to hear the truth because the truth will set you free. And some of us have these things in our life that have been built up for years. And you just got to be honest and say, God, if you would have been here, this wouldn't have happened. And so, so we see this 
And Martha, she says, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But now I know even God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. I love her response. Look what he asked. He says, do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. I love her response because she was saying, Jesus, even though you didn't do what I wanted you to do, it didn't change who I see who you are to me. Even though you didn't come through for me in this area, I know that you're still the son of God. And see, this is where God wants to get us today. That even if we don't see it happening, even if we don't see provision in our bank account, that we can say, God, I don't see it now, but you're my provider. Even though we don't see healing in our body, we can still say, God, I know you're my healer. Even though we're hurting and we're broken and we're saying, God, I'm here, I know that you are my comforter. Come on, aren't y'all thankful that Jesus is our Savior. Her perspective starts to get healed. And, it's, and, and, and right away, the moment her perspective is healed, this is what he says. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here. I, I love that he didn't just throw Mary away, right? Even though she didn't come out of the house, he still called Mary and it said, she said, the teacher's here, and he's asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. How many know that Jesus is only going to come as far as we invite him? You know, they invited him into the house before, but this time Martha did it. She left him at the gate. God is going to come as far as you invite him. And it says, when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to mourn the to, to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Now, my, my, my third truth is, when you weep, Jesus weeps. I, I want you to know that if there's one point that you can get here today, this is why I serve Jesus. Because of how good he is that while I'm waiting, he's waiting with me. That when you're at your bedside crying out to God, saying, God, why won't this work? He is getting on his knees with you and comforting you. The Bible says that, that Jesus is an understanding God. He understands our weaknesses. And so when we're experiencing these things, he gets in the dirt with us. He just doesn't look at us from heaven and say, man, you, you should have got that. You, you, you should have realized that. No, he gets on his knees with you. And he says, where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could he not? Could he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? You want to be careful to the voices that you're listening to when you're hurting. Because some people were saying, look how much this guy loved you. But then some people were saying, well, if he loved you, then why didn't he come through for you? And some people would do that in your life. They'll come and they'll say, well, if God really loved you, if God was real, then he would have came through for you. But I love what Jesus asks Mary. He says, where have you laid him? What he was saying was, take me back to the place of your disappointment. Take me back to the place where you lost hope. Take me back to the place where you felt that I didn't come through for you. And you, you started to doubt me. And what I want us to do, I'm not finished yet, but I want you to close your eyes right there. I want you to think back to the time where you might feel God let you down. He wants to go back to that place and heal that moment in your life. 
Maybe like I said, it was when you were younger and you were taken advantage of and you just say, God, if you would have been there with me, this wouldn't have happened to me. That's where I lost hope. That's where I lost faith. Maybe it was when that family member got cancer in their life. And you question God, that was the moment that I stopped believing. And I believe God is going to bring some healing today. Amen. Verse 38 says Jesus, and I'm almost done. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he was there for four days. I believe that Jesus wants to go into the dirty places in our life, those embarrassing places in our life that nobody knows about. And it says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, and he said, Lazarus, come out. Come on. Lazarus. Come out. I believe that some of your Lazarus, they're going to begin to be raised to life. Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. And Jesus said, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Come on. How many are thankful that Jesus is the resurrection? It doesn't matter how dead your situation is. It isn't over till Jesus says it's over. And I love that we're in chapter 11. But in chapter 12, the same Mary that stayed in the house was now breaking perfume and giving Jesus the most extravagant worship that she could possibly give him. How many of you know that if it wasn't for what Mary went through, she wouldn't have been able to worship him like this? And for some of you have been saying, God, why am I going through this? But there's going to be a day that he reveals to you why you went through that. He's going to reveal why your business didn't succeed. He's going to reveal why you couldn't overcome that addiction in that moment. He's going to reveal why your marriage didn't work. Because there's someone else on the other side that's going to see your breakthrough. Amen. And I'm about to end so, so we can dim the lights. And uh, I'm going to give you one last story, and, and then I'm done, I promise. Um, a couple of months ago, there was these prophetic pastors that came into our church, and they spoke a word over my life. And um, I was waiting for, like, this awesome word. And, and they, they came to me, and they said, Josh, the Lord today is saying that he loves you. And I want to tell you that today, that God is, is so in love with you. And he hasn't given up on you. Some of you feel that today, that God has not been there. He is there for you. And they told me, God loves you so much. And he has not rejected you. But the Lord wants you to know that you only give him half of your heart. And I, I didn't understand this word. They said, he wants you to be honest to him. And so I, I went home and I began to pray. And, and I said, God, I don't understand this. I, I feel like I'm... I'm I'm honest with you. I've always believed in you. I, I've never, like, lacked faith in you. And he says, no, I, I know that, Josh, but you haven't been honest with the way that you even feel about me. And he said, Josh, I want you to be honest about the disappointments in your life. And so I did. I, I said, God, why weren't you there for me when I was in the sixth grade and I was exposed to pornography and years Years and years I've struggled with this, and, and you never let anybody be there for me. I was all alone in this situation. Why, why weren't you there? I said, God, why did you allow me to go through what I went through in my marriage where we were on the brink of divorce? And then I said, God, why did you allow my wife to have a miscarriage? I believed in you. I prayed and I spoke life into my wife's stomach, and I believed scriptures, and it still didn't happen for us. Why? I was disappointed then, God, and I was honest. And, and he spoke to me and he said, now we can begin this healing process. Now I can heal you. 
And as I begin to pray, he began to show me the, the many young men that have come to me with their addictions that I've been able to, to share my testimony. He, he showed me how my friend lost his baby, and I was able to give him hope about Jesus. He showed me how months later me and my wife would lead a marriage conference here at our church. But if it wasn't for what I went through, I would have never had this testimony. And so some of you today, you are going to have one of the most powerful testimonies in this world. I want you to know that. God is going to use some of you so mighty. But right now you're in chapter 11. You're waiting for God to move. You're, you're waiting for God to raise your Lazarus. You're in chapter 11. And so what I want us to do, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And we're going to have moments of honesty. I want you just to be real and honest. Jesus is saying, take me to the place where you were disappointed. Where you thought... Some of you thought he was going to be there in that moment, but he was working on the inside of you today. The Holy Spirit is touching some of you right now. I, I'm just going to let him do his work. I want you to be honest and say, God, why this, Lord? Why did I have to go through this, God? Holy Spirit, we just love you. God, we just welcome you in this place. And if you're here today and you've never accepted this Jesus, or maybe you've been like Mary and you've, you've closed your heart off to Jesus and, and you're ready for a new start in your life, and you say, you know what, Josh, I want to meet this Jesus that can raise the dead. I want to meet this Jesus that can work on the inside of me. Oh.